Brian, we'll, we'll come back to you very shortly. Hey, a big headline that's getting a lot of buzz here today. Tesla's CEO, Elon Musk, reportedly met with Apple's head of mergers and acquisitions early last year. It's got many wondering if an Apple-Tesla deal could be in the works. Phil LeBeau joins us with more. Phil, are they, are they stronger together? Oh, I don't think that they're stronger together, Simon. And I'm not really sure that this is an indication that Tesla is interested in selling to Apple or Apple is interested in buying Tesla. I think when you take a look at this report, the thing to focus on is that you're, ha you're talking about the head of M&A for Apple and Elon Musk, the CEO of Tesla, having lunch. Lord knows what they might have been discussing, but it's certain that Elon Musk meets not only with Apple executives, but other executives at other tech firms out in the Silicon Valley. He's talked about it openly in the past because he views Tesla being as much of a tech company as it is an auto company. So as you take a look at shares of Tesla, and yes, a headline like the one we saw over the weekend about this lunch date between Elon Musk and the head of M&A from Apple, it's going to get a lot of people interested. You're looking at a stock right now that's really going to move, guys, on what happens after the bell tomorrow. That's when Tesla reports its fourth quarter earnings, and the focus is going to be on what's happening with operating margins as well as the guidance for the rest of this year in terms of sales. For sure. Steve, uh, uh, Phil, for the moment, thank you very much. Let's, uh, let's just bring in now Andrea James, who covers Tesla at Dougherty and & Company, and Will Power, he covers Apple at RW Bed, and both of them uh, are with us now. Uh, Andrea, what do you think of the idea that Tesla could do some sort of deal with Apple? What would Apple bring to the table? Well, Apple brings a lot of money to the table. You know, the companies have very similar philosophies. They're both extremely innovative and very important to sort of innovation. Um, you know, Tesla needs about a billion dollars to bring its next car to market. They have about 800 million in cash right now. They're generating about 100 million operating cash flow per quarter. Um, and they have access to Wall Street, so they don't need the money right now. But philosophically, um, both companies, I think, are able to dominate their industries without a lot of market share. Will, how do you view the situation from Apple's standpoint? What could Tesla what? do for Apple? Well, I tell you, Simon, it certainly is tantalizing on a, on a couple of fronts. I mean, A, we know from past interviews that Steve Jobs at least had some interest in developing a car. And, you know, as you talk to Apple investors, one of the big concerns is what new product category could really move the needle for them. And obviously the global auto market is one market that perhaps could do that. But all of that said, I think it's very unlikely. I think this is, is a little too far afield from their core software and consumer electronics DNA. And candidly, if they're going to spend $25 billion on something, you know, I might prefer to see them go after somebody like a Netflix, say, to, to really jumpstart the TV business. Although, Will, uh, you know, Steve Jobs was quoted as saying to the New York Times that if he had more energy, he would have taken on Detroit. I'm just curious. Granted, it's, un it's unlikely. What is your feeling? I mean, let's say the, the headline crossed tomorrow that this was actually going to happen. Would your guess be that Apple stock would go down? In other words, that it would actually be a negative for, for Apple at this point in time? Well, I, th I think that it would raise some real questions, and again, I think it's 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 pretty unlikely, and I guess difficult to speculate on. I, I think what their real focus on right now is trying to get themselves more deeply embedded into the car, and I don't think that necessarily requires actually making an acquisition. I think getting the iOS software more deeply embedded in the infotainment systems really helps a long way in terms of improving that usability and the customer experience in the car by itself. Andrea, I want to switch gears a little bit because the stock is up today, and of course we've got earnings tomorrow. In terms of the call, uh, Elon Musk had told CNBC back in January that he was going to have an update on the battery factory. What else are you listening for in terms of catalyst for the stock, which of course hit a new high today? Yeah, great question. Um, expansion into China has um, gotten a lot of people excited. I mean, they did their soft launch just by announcing China pricing, and the stock was up on that. Um, initial deliveries are scheduled for April, so we want more color on international expansion, and also we want to know how things are going in Europe. Any kind of color on that Gigafactory, I mean, that is the cell capacity, mm -hmm. the battery cells is the biggest constraint to Tesla's growth. And so um, we definitely want more details on that factory, who their partner might be, um, how much capital investment's needed. Um, that's what would advance the story to the next level. And then, of course, color on sort of their 2014 guidance. And I'm, I'm sure somebody will ask the Apple question. Andrea, thank you for joining us. Andrea James there thank and you. Will Power. We have some breaking news coming now from D.C. Let's go over to CNBC's Eamon Javis for more.